Joining me now here on the MMA Report, man, it's going to be the main event of Shamrock FC 324, November the 1st in St. Louis. Of course, live on Fight TV, it's Dustin Lampros. Dustin, as always, man, I, I appreciate the time. Uh, main event spot here, Lloyd Thornton, the opponent. Uh, I know in the past we've kind of talked about, you know, sometimes training camp can be a, uh, a crazy thing for you uh, of opponent changes, whatnot. I mean, do you kind of feel like you're finally having like just a, a normal training camp? Yeah. Uh, this, yeah, I had nothing else to say. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it feels like, uh, for the first time having an opponent stick throughout six weeks is, uh, something that's new to me. So I'm pretty excited for this. Uh, in, in terms of, uh, you know, when you and the, and the team there, you know, looked at Lloyd and, and kind of, uh, the challenges that he brings, what, was there something right from the start that stuck out to you? Well, I mean, he has quite a bit more fights than I do, so I know he has experience. But uh, I noticed that if, in some of his videos, that if he, you know, if you let him get any type of confidence or let him get going in any way, you know, he might look good and he might actually be able to, uh, you know, put some threat into something. But uh, no, not really. I, I think uh, I think it's a good matchup for me. You know, I think I'm gonna come out strong and uh, like I always do and push the pace. Is there anything about this matchup that you believe is different than your other fights? Um, in the sense that he, he has more, you know, he has quite a bit more fights than the other opponents. I mean, besides that, not exactly. You know, I, I'm not not looking past him, but uh, I train really hard and uh, I dedicate a lot of time to this. So um, I think I'm going to be ready pretty much for whoever would be in there with me. But uh, I don't I don't look at it as any different as my last four fights. How, how much of your day in day out training is about preparing for a certain type of opponent in comparison to just working on your overall game? Right now it's, it's more of working on my overall game, still learning, still growing in the sport. So, you know, I, I'm really focused on just absorbing as much as I can when I'm on the mats with all the high level guys. How would you say you've grown as a martial artist since May? Well, you know, I was originally supposed to fight in September, and I actually had to get off the card because I had a foot injury. So, I mean, I've, I've been grinding really hard and really uh, putting all my energy into a camp pretty much since uh, before September, preparing for that one. So I, I think, you know, I've, I've grown in the sense of uh, being a little bit more prepared for my fight. You know, my diet, everything uh, outside of training itself, too. You know, just getting a little bit better at everything. You know, this is my fifth professional fight, so everything's starting to, you know, get a little bit smoother for me in camp. You know, I think when I hear foot injury, I guess one of the things that pops in my head is like, man, what can you really do uh, when you have a foot injury to, you know, work on other aspects? You know, fighters say, hey, if I've got a broken hand, doesn't mean I can't go in the gym and, and work on my kicks and, and, and other things. We had that foot injury. Was it just basically you just couldn't do anything? Yeah, my, it was uh, my two toes on the end of my right foot, my pinky toe and the toe next to it. Uh, basically hyperextended. They turned black, and I just couldn't even – They it was miserable. Yeah, I, I went to throw a teep kick, and they caught the kid's knee, and it bent him back. And, uh, I mean, I – you know, I there's things I could do. I could – I had to sit up with my feet up for a little while, but, you know, I was riding the bike. I was just making sure that if there was something I could do, I was doing it at the time, you know, and if it, that even meant going to the gym and sitting on the mats, watching and learning, you know, I would do it. So, you know, I've talked to NFL players who, you know, have come into the league and they sat on the bench and they say, you know, sometimes you learn a lot just sitting on the sidelines. It, it opens up your eyes to maybe things that you just don't see if you're in there. Is there something, you know, over that time of recovery that, you know, sitting there at Hard Knocks that you're watching other guys that maybe jumped out to you? Uh, nothing, no, nothing in particular that jumped out to me. I mean, one thing that I'm I'm always trying to get better at, and obviously being at Hard Knocks with striking, being the, you know, our strong suit, uh, even though we're good everywhere, uh, is just controlling distance, you know, and I, I watch a lot of the high-level strikers there, and that's, that's, that's really the key to it, controlling the distance, uh, you know, you deciding when you're in range to hit and getting out of range and stuff like, I mean, I guess that would be one thing that I, when I'm watching, that's something I'm trying to, uh, 
I'm trying to absorb from them. How do you gauge that when you're preparing for an opponent of what that range is going to be? Or is that something that you really can't gauge until fight night? Well, luckily for myself and my teammates, we have a wide variety of guys. So if there is someone like like Lloyd, you know, he's 5'9", he's a little bit lankier than me. You know, I, I have guys in there that are the same build as him. Mm-hmm. So I can work with them and, you know... And that's the nice thing about having an opponent stick. So I kind of have this image in, in my head for the past six weeks of who I'm fighting. I fought Lloyd, you know, a bazillion times in my head already. Mm-hmm. You know, from time I wake up, time I go to bed. And, uh, yeah, so that definitely helps. <laughs> how, how do you think Lloyd's going to try to fight you? I honestly don't know how he's going to try to fight me. I don't know how uh, – you would, you know, going off my videos, they're pretty, I don't know, they're hard to judge. They're not, it doesn't really showcase much of, you know, how I fight, really. But, uh, you know, I think he's going to come out there. I, I don't know if he's going to be used to Shamrock FC cage being a little smaller, you know. But uh, I could, I, th- I think he's going to try, you know, to keep it stand. And, I mean, if I was him, I would, you know. So, I think that's what he's going to try doing. But I... Regardless, I'm just going to come out there. I'm not going to take a step back. I'm going to do what I do and press forward and try to break them early. Is that something you, you generally think you ever try to think about is, hey, what is my opponent's game plan going to be? Or is it, you know what, I'm just thinking about what I got to do. I, I can't concern myself too much of what my opponent may want to do. Well, I mean, I watch his videos. I try to see what he's, you know, what he's dominant at, this or that. But uh, there's not too much footage on him. I mean, there's some, you know, there's – last couple of fights, but uh, there's nothing in there that I'm like, all right, I got to watch out for this, you know. But like I said, if I had to say one thing is that I'm not going to let him get comfortable. It, it being comfortable in in the cage is something every fighter wants. Like, do you remember the moment that you were like, okay, I'm comfortable? Yeah, it was, it was after a fight that I realized because it happened in the fight. I was like, wow, this is like everything slow, but like – I'm controlling this now. This this doesn't seem like a blur, like a rush, like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. You know, now it's like it's slowed down, and it's it's everything. I'm visualizing it. I'm seeing it. And, yeah, it was uh, it was like my fourth amateur fight, I think, or fifth amateur fight uh, that I had. I fought a really tough uh, guy um, named Eric Ellington. And yeah. after that fight, I was like, wow. I was like, this, you know. <laughs> Like, I controlled that. Like, I was there. I wasn't panicked. You know what I mean? And uh, since then, that's when I knew. Like, I was like, all right, I can do this. And, yeah, it was about that fifth amateur fight. It was that kind of the moment you said, okay, I can feel the pro debut is coming? Was that a kind of like you need well, to feel that? Well, I mean, I didn't have a good amateur career. I, I lost more amateur fights than I won, and that was strictly on the fact that I fought really good guys and I lost decisions, wrestlers, guys that just wanted, you know, and yeah. a couple of fights that I thought I won. But, uh, you know, no, yeah, that, that was the time where I knew what I was doing. And I was like, all right, I'm, I, I'm controlling in there. Before that, it's just a rush. I'm just fighting. I'm not really – I couldn't even tell you what just happened in the fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you asked me after the fight, I'd be like, I don't remember it. But now everything's so I'm, – I'm so there in the moment that – yeah, I don't let it get away from me at all. And I think that fight was definitely the fight that I knew that was going to uh, be a game changer for me. You know, you get you, when you have this fight, you get the win. Any thoughts of what could be next for you? Uh, you know, I, I just really want to be focused on, you know, smashing him and doing my job and going out there and doing what I do best and performing to my best of my ability. But yeah, I mean, looking forward, if I could sit there to think about it and have my options, you know, I, uh, I, I want to see what I, you know, what gets brought to me. You know, hope maybe if that's a debut on the big stage, then that would be great. If I gotta, you know, keep fighting on the regional circuit a couple more, then so be it. You know, I'm in the sport uh, fully to the, you know, I'm committed to the much as you can be. So wherever it, wherever the uh, next option takes me i'm ready for it main event in st louis what's that mean to you it's pretty big i mean it means a lot to me being in south florida being away from my family not getting to be there with them you know ever anymore you know it it you know it bothers me a little bit like obviously i'm in a beautiful place and it's awesome here and i'm doing what i love but 
you know, it, it does eat at me a little bit that I'm not there around my family. So getting to come back home and be around all my family, have an early Thanksgiving after my fight and, uh, you know, fight in front of all my friends and family to me, it's it's the best feeling in the world and them being main events you know the icing on the cake so it's just uh it's awesome and of course those fans who are not in the st louis area want to watch this fight uh internet pay-per-view is available on fight tv as always man i appreciate the time uh let me know anything fight on social media and of course anybody else you want to shout out the floor is yours man uh yeah uh, I appreciate you having me and uh, shout out to my whole team over at Hard Knocks, now Sanford MMA. And uh, also I'd like to shout out to all my sponsors for backing me this camp. I mean, mean the world to me. And you can follow me on social media at Scrappy135MMA.